So here we are then, the Boeing 777-9 versus the Airbus A380. Before it starts comparing these two titans of the sky, a quick background contact session. In 2013, in response to Airbus's popular A350, Boeing updated their successful 777 series with the X program. The 777X will feature new engines, composite wings, and more importantly, a stretched fuselage. The larger, more popular Dash 9 variant could now carry up to 425 passengers in a two-class layout, 30 more than the standard 777-300ER and 40 more than the competing A350-1000. Boeing did this to lower the seat mount cost against A350, which was more fuel efficient. The result was a truly impressive flying twin, with capacity close to Boeing's own quad engine jumbo. The airplane still had decent and sufficient range, covering most of the wide body routes. It could fly up to 7,285 nautical miles. Within days of launch at the Dubai Air Show in 2013, the larger Dash 9 variant racked up huge orders with Emirates placing the largest for 150 of the 777X series. Emirates was also the largest 777 and A380 operator at the time. With the 777-9 being larger than the 777-300ER it was set to replace, it would give the airline additional capacity to grow across their route network. However, the stretch placed the 777-X in a unique spot in the market. It was larger than most wide-body twins at the time, such as the A350-1000 or the 777-300ER, but smaller than the very large airplanes like the 747-8 and A380. While it has higher trip costs than A350-1000, fuel burn per seat isn't far behind by around 5%. Furthermore, the airplane is more capable than A350-1000, and it became clear that it wasn't a direct competitor. However, the A380 could still carry 150 passengers more than the 777X easily, and it had 1000 nautical miles more range, though the lighter, newer, twin-engine 777X was way more fuel efficient per trip by an estimated 30% minimum. Furthermore, airlines started to realize that the Super Jumbo wasn't particularly profitable. Airlines always had issues with fitting such a large aircraft like the A380 and struggled with the airplane's high operating costs. For one, it was a quad jet burning more fuel with higher maintenance costs compared to the twin-engine 777X. The 777X was also perfect for airlines, looking to grow their popular routes without having to put an expensive four-engined A380 on the route which may not fill it. Airlines stand a better chance of filling the more efficient 777X than the A380. However, if airlines can fill the A380, it is worth noting that they do have similar seat mount costs. Boeing has even proposed a larger 777-10X variant to some A380 operators carrying between 450 and 475 passengers at the expense of range. This variant would be a true contender to replace aging A380s with its lower seat mount cost than A380, although range will take a hit. However, as this variant isn't launched, we will be comparing the current largest 777X, the Dash 9 variant which still has impressive capabilities. And that's where the question comes in. Is the modern twin-engine 777X capable enough to replace aging A380s? 
With many operators flying A380s also ordering the 777X, could their 777Xs replace the mega plane one day? Well, cue the music and let's find out. Starting with performance, this is where the gap between the two aircrafts can be seen. As the 777X is ultimately classified as a large twin, while the A380 is in a very large aircraft market, they do vary. The A380 can carry 544 passengers while flying 8,500 nautical miles. Very high performances indeed. The 777-9 is far behind, carrying 425 passengers while flying to a range of 7,285 nautical miles. Furthermore, the seat count of the A380 is in a 4-class configuration compared to a more dense 2-class configuration one for the 777X. Overall, the A380 does have higher performance compared to 777X, even though the latter still has enough performance to fly alongside A380s over most of today's routes. The A380 is powered by two engine choices, either the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 or Engine Alliance GP7200 engines. During the 2000s, these were the most modern engines available, producing up to 78,000 pounds of thrust each. Four of them would power the 575-ton A380 during takeoff easily. However, the new GE 9X engines on 777X are a step ahead. Producing 105,000 pounds of thrust, these engines are not only more powerful than A380, but burn 10% less fuel each while also having a lower noise footprint. This is all achieved with newer technologies, such as new lighter carbon composite fan blades, higher pressure and bypass ratios, and a larger fan. Two fuel engines are also in the favour of the 777X, allowing the airplane to burn less fuel per trip by at least 30%. All in all, the 777X has better, more modern and efficient GE9X engines. When it comes to cabins, there is no contest here. Whether you are pro Airbus or pro Boeing, the A380 simply has the better cabin. Its two full-length passenger decks with two staircases allows for an incredible floor space of 550 square meters, allowing airlines to install luxurious first-class suites, more spacious business class ones, while still leaving plenty of room for economy and premium economy cabins on the main deck. The airplane has the widest fuselage of any aircraft flying, measuring 6.58 meters wide for the main deck. With a new cabin enablers configuration, the airplane can accommodate 11 abreast seating in economy, one more abreast than the 777X while having wider 18-inch seats. The A380 also has one of the quietest cabins of any airplane, close to A350s while it still boasts a smooth ride. The 777X features the latest iteration of Boeing Sky Interior. It features new larger overhead bins, larger windows and new cathedral-like ceilings. However, the A380 does still have higher ceilings. The new sculpted cabin side walls on 777X allows for an additional 4 inches compared to today's 777. The airplane has the widest fuselage of any efficient twin, 
with a diameter measuring 5.74 meters. While Boeing markets 18-inch wide seats in economy, it is worth noting that this refers to the seat bases rather than the actual seats. Both airplanes do feature lower cabin altitude with higher pressure and the latest in Wi-Fi and connectivity systems. However, the 777X does get mood lighting standard, a feature optional on A380. All in all, boot lighting aside, the A380 still has the best cabin of any airplane flying around today. Moving quickly on, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages? Well, the A380 is proven and mostly a reliable airplane. It also has the highest capacity for routes that can support such high supply. Furthermore, it has the passenger preferred cabin. However, the older generation of engines on A380 contribute to the high trip and operational costs. Maintenance costs are also high and these high costs are hard to justify unless airlines can consistently fill a large 500-seater airplane. The 777X lacks the capacity for routes that need it. It is also less flexible with its reduced range over today's A380. However, it does have sufficient performance for most A380 routes. Furthermore, airlines wouldn't mind a smaller aircraft that is easier to fill and has lower fuel burn compared to the A380. The 777X also offers that slight boost in seating capacity compared to other large wide-body twins, allowing airlines to utilize the airplane on increasingly popular long-haul routes without the need to place a heavy A380 that may not be justifiable for most routes. However, against A350-1000, the 777-9 is less fuel efficient both per trip and per seat, though it does offer more seats and increased cargo capabilities. To be honest, both airplanes or the book pale in comparison to smaller 300-seater wide-body twin jets, with even the 400-seater 777X suffering in orders. Emirates, for example, has swapped orders for 26 777Xs to 30 787-9s, though they didn't specify which variants were swapped. Hence, no precise order numbers for each variant of the 777X series. The series in general has received 344 orders. The A380 has had even worse sales. After the cancellation of 39 A380 orders by Emirates, choosing again to go for smaller 300-seater white bodies, a total of 251 orders for the A380s would have been placed. In general, the market for both these airplanes are small as the market has essentially shifted over to smaller 300-seater long-range twins, like the popular 787, and newest A350. Still, for hub carriers looking for a larger aircraft, the 777X will be a formidable choice going into the 2020s. With its high capacity of 400 seats, the airplane is suitable for growing trunk routes with twin engine efficiency. However, for the world-renowned carriers, is 777X able to replace A380? Yes, now it comes to the time for the overall verdict. 
The A380 is the masterpiece of the 21st century. It carries more passengers and is more luxurious than any long-range twin. For hub carriers operating out of slot congested airports that need high capacity, the A380 is the perfect airplane today. But looking into tomorrow, with the industry making a paradigm shift to even more point-to-point -point routes, A380s may become obsolete for most routes. Furthermore, the high fuel burn per trip of the A380 makes it a risky airplane for airlines to operate across most of their route network. And that's where the 777X comes in. While it seats fewer passengers than A380, it is still large enough for most of today's routes. Furthermore, it benefits from twin-engine efficiency and the latest technologies. In the airplane production's view, the 777X is a very large airplane of the future and is certainly a worthy A380 replacement on most routes flown on VLAs today. Do you agree with this verdict? Comment below. As ever, thanks for tuning in to this epic airplane comparison and wishing you, as well as everyone, a truly clear sky ahead. <laughs>